So it's such a great honor to have this chance to stand here and share our topic, revolutioning scientific simulations with algal workflows. Um, today we will finish our topics in English, but during our talk, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Mandarin Chinese or Cantonese, uh, which we are more com we are more familiar with. In fact, okay. So let's begin with our short introduction. My name is Tian Shuangkun. Work at Alibaba Cloud. I'm focused on elasticity and scheduling. I'm also the maintainer of the Argo workflows. Um, I'm Suya Shi from Alibaba Cloud, uh, working on container storage, especially on object storage. Here is our agenda today. We are fortunate to have chance to support the leading enterprises in this these fields like DT technology, who are usually also the deep users of Argo workflow. In the next 20 minutes, we will try to introduce the challenges we encountered, our solutions and thinkings. Um, the first part is the characteristics of scientific simulations. There is no doubt that AI has already greatly affected our life, and scientific simulations is one of the most important parts in AI for science. It helps our scientists to model and predict the difficult problems like, um, like the disease spread, the material properties, the proteins folding, and so on, uh, for allowing for better um, decision making or planning. Yeah. And, as the typical example here, it often requires the, coordin the coordinations of multiple components, um, algorithms, and data resources to accurately uh, simulate the real-world real phenomena. It is large scale with obvious peak changes and massive amounts of data, so it is always difficult to arrange the task. Therefore. A well-designed end-to-end orchestration platform is absolutely critical, or else it will be inefficient or uh, prone to failure. So why Argo Workflows is considered to be the most suitable platform for scientific, scientific simulations? First, let's introduce Argo Workflows. Argo Workflows is an open source container native workflow engine for orchestrating parallel jobs on Kubernetes. It has a lot of use cases, including machine learning pipelines, data and batch processing, infrastructure automation, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Argo Workflows has a good interactive interface. After submitting the workflow, you can abstract observe the running status on the console. Argo Workflows is implemented as a Kubernetes CRD. Here is a simple example, which mainly consists of three parts. The first, the first part is the definition of logical relationships, which can be a sequential step or a complex DAG. The second is a template, which contains images, inputs, volumes, outputs, and args. It represents the definition of a task. The third part is the node status. Recording the completion status of each step, it will edit automatically by workflow controller during running. In addition to simple definition, Argo workflows also have many advantages. First, it is cloud native. Compared with Airflow, it can integrate seamlessly with the Kubernetes ecosystem. Second, the community is active. There are over 900 people contribute to Argo community last year, ranking third in the entire CNCF community. Third, it is easy to scale. Fourth, it supports CICD, so it's possible to integrate workflows with our build and release system. Fifth, the ecosystem is rich. Many projects rely on Argo workflows, such as Argo Events, Kubeflows, which can help us to 
to construct um, event-driven workflows. These features of Argo workflows allowed us to quickly build a scientific simulation workflow platforms. But maintaining stability and efficiency is not easy, especially in complex scientific simulation scenarios. Next, I will share some of the challenges and the solutions we encountered. The first is the complexity challenge. Here is a typical scientific simulation workflow scenario, which can be seen to be very complex. When, con when converting them into workflows, we will encounter the, the following problems. First, the system is complex and may contain thousands of containers in one step. Second, it may take a long time, often causing the workflow stark. Third, massive parameters. Scientific calculations of often require a great amount of parameters. These problems always make our workflows fail. We should, we should to find the uh, bottlenecks. Workflow controller is a core component of Argo workflows. After workflow submitted, workflow controller will run these stages repeatedly until the entire workflow completed. We analyzed these stages and found that there are three bottlenecks. The first one is in processing workflow, the input parameters are native limited and cannot exceed, exceed to 128 kilobiters. The second is in resolving references. When creating a new pod by reading the re results of the previous steps, the order is serial. If the number of children exceed 5,000, it will start the entire workflow. The third is in the persistence metadata stage. When the number of tasks running exceeds 10,000, node status will expand to a large size, over 1.5 megabits, and cannot be stored in the ETCD. After finding the root cause, we made the following optimizations. First, in precise workflow stage, check the parameter size of each task. If it exceeds 128 kilobits, offload it to the config map, and then read it back during running. Second, in the resolving references stage, using parallel acceleration strengthening to render multi-template in one large step. Third, in the persistence metadata stage, offload parts of the node status to the database when the node exceeds 5,000, especially in the test result and the global outputs. Through the above pro pro problem analysis and optimizations, we have made some improvements. The first is arguments start up, which can reach one megabit. The second is accelerated start up. More than 5,000 pods can be parsed in one minute. Third, the size of a single workflow's part can be increased from 10,000 to 40,000. This result shows that we have adapted well to the complexity of scientific simulation workflows. Will our workflows run smoothly from now on? No, we often encounter accidents. First, service interruption. The HTTP calls made, made times out. Second, the images may not match the OS and cause the task fail. Third, due to resource constraints, the server we request may not may be out of stock. Fourth, resource exceed, such as CPU throttling and out of memory. These problems are unaccessible in large-scale scientific simulation scenarios. We should use retry strengthen to improve the success rate. A workflow contains lots of steps. Only when every step runs succeed, the entire workflow can be successful. We can configure some specific strengths to retry when the workflow step fails. 
This can handle some scenarios that are easy to retry, such as service interruption, node failure, network jitter. Success can reach success can be achieved by simple retraining. But for some other scenarios, it is difficult to retry, such as out of memory. This is very common in large-scale workflows because it's difficult for developers to, for develop to estimate the usage of each step before running. If you retry at this time, you will still get a failure. So we need some more effective retry strengthening. Rely on the strong observability of the Kubernetes ecosystem. We collect many information from each task, including CPU utilization, memory utilization, task is queued. When the workflow step fails, a reasonable retry strengthening will be calculated based on these information. Such as in the case of out of memory, the application's memory will be gradually increased according to the step size. If the disk utilization is too high, we will expand the temporary space. By enhancing the retry strengthening, the success rate can be significantly improved. Beyond complexity support and success rate, developers also concerned about performance cost, easy of use. Now my colleague Su Ya Shi will introduce some experience in these areas. Okay, same with the other AI applications. Scientific simulations need lots of the data interactions. When we, when we decide the storage system in workflow, um, first, the data should be shareable and easy to use. As the size of the artifacts can reach to hundreds of gigabytes, even to trillion byte level, the cost is another important com consideration. Therefore, remote objects um, storage like S3, OSS, Azerprop is the mainstream choice. So we can say that the performance of data transmissions will greatly affect the overall performance and utilization rates of our computing resources. Our goals of visual data transmissions is implemented by executors. As the figure one show, our goal will inject an inner container and a sidecar container uh, on demand to upload or download the data. As all the containers are running on the C port, um, the data can be shared by mountings um, like the empty dirt volumes. Absolutely, data processing is independent and may cause the overwriting conflict. In addition, parts of the input files may be redundant. Pulling data repeatedly for each port is unreasonable, while expensive GPUs are waiting. Some users choose to use the native persistent volumes, as the figure two shows of Kubernetes, which also has better support for the um, cell-built storage. Intermediate data and catch can be shared amongst the pods in this way. Files will be um, will be downloaded when actually used, which is more flexible. In fact, it is usually implemented by the um, fields-based mounting tools like S3FS, OSSFS, or GCE fields. Um, there is always a, a trade-off between the performance and the process operations compatibilities, especially for the random write. In fact, in the most cases of scientific simulations, the input artifacts like the model or the data sets are read-only. So through the analysis of these two methods, we give the best practice of read-write separations. Data is read through the read-only volumes, and the results are uploaded by executors. Um, if there is only 
if there is any intermediate results to upload, SDK or another writable volume is recommended. When we limit it to the um, read-only scenarios, several optimize, uh, optimizations can be done. Firstly, we select the more lightweight mounting tool. For example, if you are using S3, you can choose to use the mount point S3 instead of F uh, S3FS. If you are using OSS, um, you can turn on the direct read mode of OSSFS for better reading performance. Secondly, use catch to exchange space for time. Compared with the expensive GPUs, um, catch on disk, even on memory, is relatively cheap. Um, the abound solutions are suitable for the repeated computing on the same node, but for distributed computing, which is more uh, common, each node needs to keep copies of the data, while pulling data will also occupy the network I.O., which uh, may affect the performance of um, our business. Another choice is the distributed catch. Um, cheaper nodes with large memory and high network I.O. limits can be added into the clusters. And our files can be divided and stored in different nodes. Um, this can be easily implemented by uh, some distributed orchestration platform like Fluid. And more detail is the advantages is uh, first for the code data, it can be poured the first time concurrently and can reach the I/O limits of a single bucket. And for the catch data which we call the hot data too. Um, it can be reused by multiple nodes and, it with the, and when they need to pull the data um, just only with the in-cluster communication. We can also use the data cache to enhance the memorization mechanisms in Argo workflow too. Um, so let's briefly introduce the memorizations and its role first. We can use this to record the treasures, templates, outputs in the config map for the latter steps we use. Um, Argo can bypass is by directly, directly reading the results. But due to the limited amount of the config map data, only the paths of the artifacts can be recorded. In other words, only the metadata is cached. We can also use the data cache to speed up the uh, setup, uh, setup times for the latter steps. Especially, we propose two map catching strategies. The first is the best ever mode. Cache will be um, automatically eliminated when its, um, when its assessed frequency decreases. Then it will play as a normal memorization and to save the catch capacity. And the second is the guarantee mode. We will set the, the TTL of the catch to be consistent with the memorization, uh, clean it when it expires to ensure that it can, be, it can hit the catch when reused. It's suitable for the um, workflows with high performance requirements. We've done lots of the enhancement to help scientists uh, to help scientists to use the scientist simulations, uh, make it run more efficiently or and stably on Argo workflows. But here is another great difficulty: how to make it easier to use without in-depth knowledge of uh, Kubernetes. The answer is to use the Python SDK like Heller and Diffro, as AI for science is so dependent on Python ecosystem. Scientists can submit a huge workflow through a setable code work without knowing any CRD of Argo and avoid writing an YAML file. And it is easier to integrate the rich Python libraries and test locally. Um, finally, we will give an easy demo of molecular dynamic simulation. 
Um, here is the diagrams of our framework. We will submit uh, workflows through the Python SDK, which will run on the manager Zargo workflow cluster in Alibaba Cloud. Users um, can users not need to um, maintain the working components of Argo, just focus on their business. Digitally, tax will run on sports for high elasticity and low cost. Fluid is invoiced to managers the distributed catch. And it's a short description of the demo. At first, data preparation steps will handle around 11 gigabytes input with the processed data, three simulations, and the rebranding steps will run one by one. Um, during our demo, we will use distributed catch to speed up the data downloading and use the memorizations to bypass the, co the most time cost simulation step and then test uh, the retrace mechanisms for the uh, OM arrow. This is a console of managed Argo workflow on Alibaba Cloud machine before. Click here to directly enter the Argo workflow UI. A workflow has been run here. You can see that it took 51 seconds in test preparation. In the end, one task failed due to out of memory, which caused the entire workflow fails. Next, we will use Python SDK to submit the same optimized workflow. We can find a new workflow submitted just now. In this step, we have added distributed cache managed by Fluid, and we can see its running times reduced to around 20 seconds, which is much better than before. In the third phrase, we add memorize, and you can see that the task directly hit the cache when it runs, and the running time is 0 seconds. In the rendering phrase, although the first step out of memory, the second retry was quickly adjusted and the retry was successful. You can see that all three sets of water molecular dynamic simulation tasks run successful and output the corresponding results. Okay, finally, let's make a summary. summary. By orchestrating large scale scientific simulation workflows, we have gained the following experience. First, complex workflows can be supported through offloading for to DB config map and uh, parallelization. Second, automated retry can improve the success rate of our workflow. Third, caching can make our workflow cost effective and uh, faster. Fourth, using the Python SDK, which can make it easier for researchers to get started with Argo workflow. If you are also using Argo workflows to orchestrating large-scale workflows, hoping that our sharing can help you. Thanks. Any questions?
啊，如果没有特别的问题的话，那我们今天先到这儿。如果欢迎大家就是下面找我们就是讨论，如果感兴趣的话，嗯，谢谢大家。Thanks.